very warm welcome to all of you and uh, today we are here to have the math revision marathon 2.0 let's begin with this so uh, just a little heads up for all of you this session is going to be recorded for quality and marketing purposes so as i can see that all of your wonderful faces here right now so it would be great if you can have a little smile up on your faces uh, let me introduce myself so my name is palak and i'm a math enthusiast so uh, i'll be taking your session for today and um, you know if i would just like to tell you a little bit about myself i like to you know spend my free time reading books i like reading detective novels i like reading crime novels sherlock holmes is one of the all time favorites that i've ever had so yes that was a little about me this presentation is going to cover a lot of things so um first of all let me tell you exactly who we are who we are at 98th percentile So we are an online e-learning company. Uh, we cater to grades one to twelve for mathematics subject. We cater to grades one to eight for English and coding classes, and then we have grades three to eight covering public speaking classes from home. So we have a live classroom environment where we experience blended learning in a live environment. So all of our classes they are like one, uh, sessions where uh, you know we have students sitting with us. we have live classrooms we have sessions uh, we connect with students so that is how we have classes at you know 90th percentile then again we are committed to personalized attention that is we have a very small group size so we don't believe in enrolling like you know bundles of students in just one classroom we believe that yes you know it's a it having a small group size so we can have like a very close attention with all the students that we have so that is something that we really believe at 90th percentile after that we believe in acceleration and skill mastery so what we mean by that is we try to fix skill gaps and we focus on acceleration if we have students who like you know uh, probably a student is in grade 4 but has covered all the curriculum that is there in grade 4 to cover with so we like to accelerate that child to the particular grade or to the particular curriculum that that child must be learning of so these are a few aspects a few features that we have at 90th percentile we have a lot of benefits that our students enjoy so if i would just like to cover a few of them so at 90th percentile we believe in personalized learning then again we have monthly and weekly tests to ensure that yes the students have learned uh, like you know everything uh, whatever we teach them we make sure that a proper guidance a proper test has been taken so that we can also ensure that yes this is what we have covered and this is what the student has understood so that can only be ensured by you know regular tests regular monitoring the students progress after that like i mentioned on the previous slide as well we've got accelerated curriculum um i would not like to go that much into detail about the accelerated curriculum since that is something that we already covered so yes if we feel that yes a student is like you know at par level um he or she has already covered at whatever grade that they are at so we definitely make sure that they are accelerated to a very advanced curriculum something that they will also enjoy learning about now again for the monetary aspect uh, usually this is something that we receive as a feedback from the students from the parents that it is the eight times value for the money that the students and the parents are provided with and then again we've got the skill gaps fixing so sometimes there are students who might not be that great with algebra who might not be that great with geometry so you know we try to make sure that they are in an environment that only those skills are focused on fixing which need the fixing part if overall a student needs uh, like you know help with the entire grade 6 curriculum or the entire grade 5 curriculum we definitely cater to that but like you know if we have students who like you know just um, uh, are not that great with just one or the other topic so we definitely make sure that we focus all our attention on that particular topic after that um we have access to winning platforms so this is something that uh, you know students who study with us students who learn with us they definitely uh, you know uh, we see great potential in some of the students so we kind of mentor them in certain way that you know they uh, go ahead to win accolades for themselves we have uh, some testimonies to show you we have some customer reviews to show you that why exactly or like how exactly our customers love us so if you just have a look 
we have so many testimonies telling us that you know their daughters their sons they were struggling with so and so subjects it's not just for mathematics but for english and for public speaking and for coding classes as well that they were suffering with so and so or they were not very great with something and this is how they you know revert back to us they tell us that yes so and so were the areas that this children were not that great with and this is how we at 98 percent have helped up help them come up with this so these are just a few testimonies these are just a few feedbacks that we have collected from the parents which i would like to show all of you after that a little uh, video i have to play for all of you so allow me to play that kushi and i'm a student 98th percentile in the beginning i didn't really enjoy learning math but when I joined 90th percentile, my teacher, Ms. Preeti, helps me develop a passion for math. I have really enjoyed learning from 90th percentile and I would say it's very helpful. I progressed very quickly while understanding each and every concept very clearly. My teacher, Ms. Preeti, has guided me in advancing my math skills while also taking the time to review previous skills. They also give weekly tests and benchmarks to make sure you're on track and if you're not, they help you get back on it. And my parents also really enjoy 90th percentile. Here's a word from my mom. Okay, so this was just one of the snippets that we have had, like, you know, all the students uh, that have learned with us, they try to come up uh, with, you know, like they try to send us back their reviews, they try to send us their videos uh, as to how 90th percentile has exac exactly helped them. So this was just one of the snippets after that. Uh, I would just like to walk you through as to what today's session is going to be. I, I think I've explained to you well enough that, yes, what exactly 90th percentile is, how exactly we function. So now just let us get our track back on to Math Revision Marathon. So 90th percentile is a leading e-learning platform which offers classes in ELA, Maths, Public Speaking and Coding. This is what's something we've already covered. Now, Math Revision Marathon is basically going to be focused on five domains. So these five domains are basically going to be uh, the main five structures that we have for mathematics. Now, the students will answer questions based on their grade and their domain. Now, um, all of our experts will explain the question and teach that concept in a live session. So basically, it's going to be uh, like, you know, we will have a question up front. All of you will be asked to answer it. And based on your responses, like, uh, you know, if the question is, let's say, one plus two, quickly, which one of you can tell me what is one plus two? Quickly write it in the chat, everyone. Let's see who gets it the fastest. Okay, so Aryan, Ratika, Divit, Sashank, I can see so many answers saying three. Now let's level up a little bit. How much is uh, 20? Hey, Palak, sorry, sorry. Uh, just everyone, just one small mistake. Not grade three, grade five, uh, slight typing error over here. So I see that people had some confusion with that. Uh, this is not grade three, it is for grade five. Once again, sorry. Thanks a lot for bringing that to my notice, Parsh. Uh, so yes, it's for grade five, not for grade three, a uh, slight thing, a slight typing error at our part. So yes, uh, which brings me to my next question. How much is 21 plus 11? Quickly. Perfect. Aryan, Sashank, Arush, Devid, all of you have the correct answers. Great. Now, if I level up even a bit, uh, even a little bit more, how much is 2100 plus, uh, let's say one, two, three, two. I will repeat. How much is 2100? plus one, two, three, two. So this is exactly how our sessions are going to be. I will be posting questions. You will be answering them. And once like, you know, we are done with that question, we will be having a little interaction and we will be having a little discussion as to how we can, you know, get to the answer a little more quickly and how can we get to the answer a little bit in a more better manner. So that is how the concepts, the questions, answers and everything is going to be. So. It is going to be uh, like, you know, five weeks of intense practice, revision sessions. So, you know, we can make sure that all of you students are ready for your upcoming exams. So, like I said, the all the things that we're going to provide in these sessions is just in the name itself. It's going to contain maths, it's going to contain revision, and above all, it's going to be a marathon-based session as to how we can get to the answers. So, thank you all for answering all the questions that I just talked about. Now, a little piece of guidelines. This is not a contest. It is going to be a practice session. So there are not going to be any sort of awards for the Kahoot winner. So I am a little apologetic on that part. Next up, the questions have been selected based on the concepts which need maximum revision. So please do not panic if in case we are missing out on any topic. Like I said, we've tried to come up with a clubbed curriculum 
which is going to spread out and you know we'll try to cover all the major topics that we have had as there's going to be a large gathering so addressing individual doubts is going to be difficult that is why we are not going to be able to mute each and every one of you whatever communication is going to be there is going to be through the chat process for help with individual doubt and practice all the enrolled students that are there for this session they can seek help with the 90th percentile teachers during the class time we will try to cover as many concepts as possible we do not come into touch based on each and every topic in detail because like i said we have a little bit of time constraints as well so there are a few limitations on our part so please try to bear up with us next in case a student is behaving inappropriately the host bears all the rights to remove the student from the session immediately so if we feel that you know some of the other students is creating a little bit of ruckus is creating a little bit of chaos we kind of have the rights to you know very uh, like I'm, I'm sorry for that but yes those students need to be removed from the sessions immediately like i said students will be kept on mute throughout the session they can use the chat section for any sort of communication that they need to do so these are just a few little bit guidelines that i wanted to make sure that we come across before we start off with our sessions next like i said our entire uh, curriculum has been divided into five parts so the number one is going to be operations and algebraic thinking next up we've got numbers and operations in base 10 then we've got numbers and operations fractions then we have measurement and data and finally we will be wrapping up with geometry so these are the few topics that our curriculum is widely spread with then how, what are going to be the benefits of this math revision marathon 2.0 that we have so we are going to analyze and revise your math concepts we need to make sure that all of you are prepared for your exams well in advance next up like i said there's going to be no participation fees and apart from that we are going to have ample amount of practice worksheets and since the sessions are going to be on kahoot so i think there's a little added benefit which is not really put up here but yes there's going to be a little bit of fun level as well and these classes are definitely going to be focused exam classes so uh yes this is how the practice sessions and everything are going to be conducted next uh this was a combined uh, introduction for the parents and the students but uh fortunately slash unfortunately this is the part where the parents need to like you know uh like you know you can relax this is where the students part starts up so thank you parents for all your time for listening out to me for hearing me out for how the sessions are going to be conducted and what all things are going to be covered and everything so before the parents uh, leave i just have a little request if you can just you know help your child setting up a few devices so this is how the structure of the class is going to be so i want all of you to be prepared in such a way um all of you have already joined the meeting link uh, that you have so the recommended device would be a laptop or a desktop now you'll be needing another second device in order to log into kahoot now how exactly kahoot works is i will be sharing my screen with the kahoot so um uh, what will uh, like you know you'll be having a game pin now uh, with kahoot what happens is the question will be available on my screen and there will be four options available so you need to answer with those four options so if you have uh, like you know the kahoot logged in on your mobile phone it will be easier and then also you can you know put in your name as your uh, like you know as your id by which i can recognize that yes so and so person has answered the question in so and so ways so it would be highly recommended if you can uh, like you know join in kahoot through your mobile phones so you can answer on your mobile phones you can see the questions on your desktops okay just in case if like you know if there's any such uh, circumstances that you're not able to log in through another device uh, it's just a slight bit of a trouble that you will have to switch between the devices so it's going to be a little bit difficult but yes it would be a lot more better if 100 percent you can just join in through a second device So here's your first question. There's a time limit. Make sure you answer within the time limit. Quickly, everyone. So I can see one answer, two going up. Good. Okay. Great. So the maximum number of people have answered C, which again is the correct answer. So 
let us just go back to the question so the question was select the expression that is equivalent to 14 so this question is very much based on the usage of parentheses so we can see over here that option number c 2 times 8 gives us 16 16 minus 2 gives us 14 so that definitely is the correct answer great job all of you over here okay so with this let's move on to the next question this one was a little easier one but like i said we're going to level up the difficulty level as we move on with the next questions okay so moving on to the next one but before that let's have a look as to how all of you have performed so we've got Shar 002Z leading the scoreboard. Then we've got Ishan. Then we've got Sir. I believe that was supposed to be Simran, but let's let's take up what the name is Sirman. Then we've got Priyansh, and then we've got Dasas. Okay, so the leaderboard is at this point is showing up in this manner. Okay, moving on to the next question. So the second one, the second question is loading up. Okay. Where can we place the parentheses in 32 minus 8 divided by 4 so that it is equivalent to 6? So I've got one answer so far. 17 more seconds to go. Hurry up. Try to answer it with utmost accuracy along with the speed. Good. 10 answers. 12, 13, 14. Okay. So we've got uh, 12 people getting the answer correctly. Two of them have answered option A. One of them have answered option D. Okay, so let's see how exactly this was supposed to be worked out. So we needed the answer to be equivalent to six. So all of us are familiar with the logic of PEMDAS. For quite a lot of time, you might come across the word bid mass or bold mass. So all of them basically mean the same thing. That we're supposed to cater to the parentheses first now we need to make sure that this answer when we put up the parentheses we get it equivalent to six so um we can do a trial and error method here so 32 minus 8 gives us 24 divided by 4 that gives us six some of you might have tried to use it in a little different manner so if we do it in this way okay my bad eight divided by 4. So 8 divided by 4 would have given us 2. 32 minus 2 not exactly equal to 6. So that is why the answer that we're supposed to have was option number B. So is there anyone who has not understood either of the two questions that we've done so far? So far so good everyone? Like I said, a little thumbs up on the video, on Zoom or on chat. Either of the three is fine with me. Okay, great. I can see a lot of thumbs ups. Great. Thank you for that. So let's see how the scoreboard looks like. So there are a few changes in the scoreboard. Priyansh has moved to the top. Ishan maintaining his position at the second. Vasas has also moved up. We have Avni and Fadzia as the new two people on the top five scoreboards. Okay. Congratulations to all of you so far. Moving on to the third question. So you need to choose the correct option here. Which of the following expressions is equal to 40? Quickly. The numbers are rising. The calculations are becoming tougher. Eight seconds more, everyone. The answers have not quite come up here. Okay, so I've got four people answering option A, two people answering option B, three of them getting the answer correct with option C, and three of them answering the option D. Okay, so let me give you a little cheat code with this question. Now, um, like I said, the numbers are, you know, gradually increasing. Like initially, I asked you what was 1 plus 2, all of you answered 3. Then I asked you what was 21 plus 11, all of you answered 32. But this one took like, you know, two or three seconds more. But when I increase the question to 2100 added to 1232, I think uh, nearly all of you took like five or like eight seconds or like 12 seconds to answer this. So now for questions like these, where we have got MCQs, where we have got options, there are cheat codes, there are, you know, certain ways in which you can ensure that you've got the correct answer in the given amount of time that we have had. So here, if you see which of the following expressions is equal to 40, 
So if you just quickly go on to the parentheses on the left side, this one gives you 21. This one gives you 2 times 5, which is 10. This one gives you 38 minus 6, which is 32. And this one gives you 125 divided by 5, which is 25. So if you look at the operation between the two parentheses, this one is negative, this one is negative, this one is negative. So if you go for 25 minus something, that is definitely going to be negative because this number also seems relatively a lot lesser. This one is 32 minus something. Now this says 2 times 18 minus 2, which is again uh, 2 times 16, which is 32. So that becomes eventually 0. This is the only option where we have got a parenthesis getting added to another parenthesis. So this has a very higher chance of getting us the answer. So whenever you try to attempt a question where you definitely have got options in front of you, my number one suggestion would be that eliminate all the wrong answers, whatever leaves is the correct answer. So this one was definitely out of question. 25 minus a positive number can never be equal to 40. 32 minus a positive number, again, not equal to 40, which leaves us with this answer. So if I were in your case, if I were in your situation, my number one attempt would have been, I would have definitely checked for third option before going on to any other options. So is everyone able to understand the thought process, how you are supposed to be attempting these questions? Is everyone getting a good idea as to how this is supposed to be done? Okay, great, perfect. It's nice to see so many people, you know, getting these answers, understanding what needs to be done. Okay, moving further, let's check how the scoreboard is looking like. So Priyansh again maintaining his position. Arush coming up real fast at the second position. Ishan going down a little bit at the third number. The Sas maintaining the position. And then we've got another new name on the list that is Shah. Okay, great. So is everyone ready for question number four? Yes or no? Quickly. This one needs a quicker response. It's either a yes, either a no. Is everyone ready for the next question? Okay. Great. Okay, I am getting just one no, but Ratika, I'm so sorry. The majority is with the yes. So I'm kind of going on with the next question. We will circle back to you as to why you don't want to, you know, go on with any more questions. Okay. So yes, which of the following expressions is equal to 15? Similar question. Try to, you know, implement the trick that I taught you. Quickly, everyone. The timer is running down. More number of answers coming through. Nice. Hey, that's lovely. Nearly all of you have got the correct answer, which is option number one. Let's see what the question was and how exactly we're supposed to be attempting it. So what we have got over here is, which of the following expressions is equal to 15? So if I just have a quick check over the answers. So this one was, I'm just focusing on the left parentheses for now. So this was 25, 4 times 8, 32, 3 times 15 gives us 45. And then we have 9 plus 18, which is 27. So over here, all the options that have been given to us have a very high chance of getting us the answer is 15. So quickly solving the right part of the parentheses. This one goes for 8. This one goes for 9. 25 divided by 5 gives us 5. 5 times 4 is 20. And then here we have 2 times 6 as 12. So quickly working up on the answers, we get the correct answer as option number A. So is there anyone amongst all of you who did not quite understand this question or was like clueless as to what needs to be done in this? So far, we have been majorly focusing on how to get the questions done based on the rules of PEMDAS, where we know that P stands for parentheses, E stands for exponents, M stands for multiplication, D gives us division. A gives us addition and S stands for subtraction. So all of our questions have majorly been uh, like, you know, based on this concept. So now let's quickly have a look at the scoreboard as to how it looks like now. Okay, Priyansh has made a very good gain and is on the first position. Ishan has made a progress onto the second position. Then we've got Shar, then Manaswi coming up fourth and Avni leading the scoreboard by the fifth number. Okay, great. So let us move on to the next question. 
Let us see how many of you are able to get the correct answer for this. Okay. So here you need to work out the expression. What would be the last operation to compute when evaluating this numerical expression? Okay. The answer is coming up quite quick. Okay. Nearly all of you are finished before time. So that's a good thing. Okay, so one person has answered option number D. Maximum of you, majority of you have answered the correct one, which is option number B. Now, this was a little bit of a tricky question. It said, what would be the last operation to compute when evaluating this numerical expression? So, some of you have answered subtraction based on the abbreviation that I keep on reiterating every time. That is the PEMDAS. But if you have a very good look at the question, you'll be able to see that first you'll be attending to this parenthesis, which is addition. Next, you will be attending to 24 divided by whatever answer that we get over here. So the next one is going to be division. After that, we need to solve the square brackets. That is the square parenthesis. So we'll be moving on with the subtraction part. And then finally, when all the parentheses have been taken care of, we'll be moving on with the last expression, which is the multiplication. Henceforth, giving us the answer as option number B. So anyone amongst you who did not quite understand this question or still is a little hazy as to why the answer would be multiplication? Since majority of you answered option number B, I think there's going to be a very uh, like you know negligible uh, quantity of people who might not have got the question. But again, is there anyone who did not understand this? Okay, so can I get a quick thumbs up if you've all understood the question so far? Okay, wonderful. Okay, I think some of you have forgotten the very first point that I made. The session is going to be recorded. So it would be really nice to have one a smiling face. All of you have been getting such nice answers, so much correct answers. I have not seen one smiling face so far. And I've been keeping, keeping track of all of your faces. I can see Kushi smiling, Avni frowning. Avni is not smiling at all. She's not happy with the session. Arush semi-smiling. Okay, great. Thank you for all the lovely smiles. Moving on, let's see the scoreboard now. Okay, so Ishan getting up to the first position. Ishan, my big thumbs up to you. So next up, we've got Shar, who's made a very great comeback. Then we've got Priyansh, a new name on the scoreboard that is Divit. And then we've got Arush at the fifth position on the scoreboard. Okay, great. It's going to be a difficult competition for all of you. So now let's have the sixth question. Okay, quickly, evaluate the expression. Two answers so far. We've got like nearly 10 seconds. I would say buckle up. Okay, so nice of you. All of you, you have this, you know, music ringing in your ears. You have the pressure of answering the question within the given time while I'm just sitting over here watching all of you solve. So first of all, kudos to that, everyone. So we were asked to evaluate this expression. So now if I just quickly work this out for you, we've got 30 divided by 5. We get the answer over here as 6. 6 minus 2 gets us the answer as 4. So as of now, we have just opened up all the parentheses. Now if we go further, we've got 2 plus 4 times 5 minus 4. Now what exactly are we supposed to do over here? What needs to be done the first? Quickly. If I have, if I may have someone in the chat answer to this, what needs to be done over here? Okay, so Divit says four times five. Let's go with Divit. So four times five gives us 20. Now we have two plus 20 minus four. So now again, according to PEMDAS, we've got addition. So two plus 20 gives us 22. 22 minus four gets us the answer as 18. Is 18 the correct answer? Is this done correctly? Have I, have I made myself, uh, you know, up to the mark to get to the scoreboard okay perfect so yes this is how you get to the answer over here so congratulations to all the 10 people who got this correct maybe try hard a little next time the ones who have answered b and c 
Having a look at the scoreboard, we can see a little change. Shar moving up to the first position. Ishan going down a little bit to the second one. Then we've got Priyansh, Tivit, and Arush maintaining his position at the fifth number. Good. Let's quickly move on to the next one. That is question number seven. Okay. So quickly, everyone try and answer this. Okay, this time I've got a little like, you know, distributed weightage over here. So let's go back to the question. It said which of the following expression gives an answer of six. So this might have taken a little bit of time. Now, again, for this question, we don't exactly have a cheat code as to how we can get to the answer. So we will have to solve, you know, each and every question over here. So uh, each and every option, my bad, we'll have to uh, solve each and every option over here. So for the first one, we have got 9 plus 3 multiplied with 6 plus 2 minus 5. So this will be 9 plus 3 times 8, that is 24. Both of them in parentheses, minus 5. So this would give us the answer as 9 plus 24 gives us 33. 33 minus 5 is 28. Definitely not our answer. Then we have got 18 minus 12 minus 4 is 8. 8 plus 7 gets us 15. And then we have got minus 2. So 18 minus 15 minus 2 gets us 13. 18 minus 13 is 5. Very close, but definitely not equal to 6. Then we have 22 minus 4, which is equal to 18. 18 divided by 2 gives us 9. 9 minus 6 gives us 3. And 3 plus 3 over here gives us 6. So definitely the correct answer. So since we have got the correct answer, there's no point in going back. Now, uh, there is something about these questions. Whenever we have a question that asks us to, you know, work out the answer based on the options, there is a very, uh, like, you know, sometimes a very 50-50 chance that most of the times the answer is either option D or either option C. Like this is how, you know, usually I'm just giving you an insight into a teacher's mind that whenever we have, like, you know, questions, we usually think that, you know, every student will start solving from option A, option B, option C and option D. So by the time they reach option D, that would have taken some, some, somewhat amount of time. So try to attempt the question in a reverse order in these kind of questions. I'm not 100% assuring you that the answer is always going to be option C or D because I don't want you people to come back to me like, yes, Miss Pala told us that the answer is always going to be option C and option D. So I'm not going to like, you know, cross my heart and hope to die kind of a situation. But yes, majority of times it's usually the answer as option C or D. So kind of keep that in mind whenever you try to solve questions like these. Having a look at the scoreboard, we have Ishan, Priyansh, Arush, Shar, and Divit. Okay, so familiar set of names coming up time and again. Let's move on to question eight quickly. Okay, so let's have a look. Majority of you have answered the correct answer. Some of you missed answering this, but let's see how this question was supposed to be attempted. So here we have 44 divided by 5 plus 6. So this gives us 44 to be divided by 5 plus 6, which is 11. Then this needs to go in one parenthesis. For the other one, we have got 45 minus 25, which is 20, 20 divided by 4. 44 divided by 11 gives us 4. Four times this is five so this gives us the answer as option number one okay so is there anyone who did not quite understand how this question was supposed to be attempted is everyone all right as to how this question was supposed to be done any questions any queries whatsoever okay so if there are no questions can i maybe get a thumbs up it's been like three or four questions as i've got a thumbs up okay great wonderful thank you Having the same process with the scoreboard. Okay, so again, 
familiar set of names coming up Priyansh. Arush has gained quite a lot of points. Then we've got Shar, Ishan, and Vivit. Okay. Let's see who gets to the answer in the next one. Okay. Rudra, I just saw your message. We'll circle back to your question. You're confused. Let's try to see if you are able to clarify your confusion with this one. So we've got five people answering it correctly. Two of them getting the answer as option A, which was incorrect. Six of them getting the answer as option C. Okay. So let's see why everyone got the answer as C. Okay. So we were supposed to put if P equals five, which of the following expressions has a value of two. So if we just quickly check, um, three times five gives us 15 divided by one plus 8 minus 6 gives us 2. So here we have 15 divided by 3, which is 5. I'm not entirely sure as to why you got the answer as C, but uh, what comes to my mind, the very first thing is that because the value of P is equal to 5, maybe that was a thought process that, you know, solve the question, try to answer, like, you know, which one of has the, which one of these has the value of P. So maybe the people who have answered the option as C forgot to have a look at this part. Now, if we observe the option number D, so we've got 17 minus 5 multiplied with 2, putting up a parenthesis, whole minus 5. So this is 17 minus 5 times 2, which is 10. 17 minus 10 is equal to 7. 7 minus 5 gives us 2. Okay, so this is how this question was supposed to be taken care of. Like I said, majority of questions... If you want to choose between the answers, it's kind of going to be between C and D. So there's a major chance of that. Okay, moving on to the scoreboard, we have Shar, Arush, Priyansh, Tivit, and Ishan. So it's like, you know, these five people are having some sort of, uh, like, you know, uh, counting strategy within themselves So in order to get to the answers. Okay, I thought P equals 2, so that's why I got wrong since I was in a rush. No worries, Ishan. Like I said, with these sessions, we are not just going to focus on the accuracy. We are also going to keep up with the speed as well. So it's like 50% speed, 50% accuracy. Bringing them together, we'll be having 100% math revision. Okay, moving on to the next question. Question number 10. Quickly. Okay, so none of us got the answer correct. Was the question that difficult? Before I start explaining, if I could just have a little answer from all of you. Was the question lengthy? Was the question difficult? Okay, so one finger for question for to be lengthy, two fingers for the question to be difficult. Let's have a, okay, so lengthy, lengthy, lengthy. Again, Lendi, one of them is saying difficult. Two of them are saying difficult. Okay, so it's like a tie. Okay, I can see someone putting up one finger and two fingers. It was like Lendi and difficult. Okay, so let's see how we are supposed to go about it. Okay, so did not understand. It was long and not enough time. Okay, so let's see how this question was supposed to be attempted. So I think this part is only applicable for the people who found it Lendi uh who found it difficult the lengthy people you if given like five or ten seconds more you would have gotten the correct answer so let's see so this one was 30 minus 7 plus 3 times 3 times 5 plus 6 times 7 minus 3 divided by 4 curly brackets okay so my first suggestion would be just put in the value of whatever variable that you have like plug in the values and then only go about with the answer. 
So here we have 30 minus 7 times 3 gives us, sorry, 7 plus 3 gives us 10. 10 times 15 plus 6 times 4. This is what we have so far. Then we have 10 times 15 is 150. 150 plus 24, we get this as 174. 174 divided by 4. Now 174 divided by 4 gives us the answer as what? Have we been going correctly so far? Is this like, you know, divisible? Are we going in the correct direction, everyone? That is what my question is. Okay, so Rudra Kumar is still not getting it. Okay, so 174, when we try to divide that by 4, will we be getting a correct answer? That is what my question. It is not divisible. Right. Thank you for that, Arush. Really complex. Okay. So 174 is not divisible by 4 over here. But we can try to commit, come up with a decimal-based answer over here. So this gives us 4 times 4 as 16. We put 1 over here. So that gives us 3. And then we have got like 43.5. So 30 minus 43.5. Okay. I think there's a little error over here. Uh, the answer by mistake got marked as D. But the correct answer over here, we will be getting as negative 13.5. So let us see if any one of you actually got negative 13.5 over here. Okay. So two of you have answered negative 13.5. So that actually is the correct answer. I'm really sorry for this error. That might be some like, you know, technical difficulty with this. So can I have a hands up as to who answered negative 13.5? So I can see Manit. I can see Khushi. If more than two people raise their hands, there's going to be a little bit of, you know, someone is not being very much honest. Okay, so great. So Khushi and uh, Manit, great job. You both have got the correct answer. I'm really sorry for this. So... I'm glad that no one of you answered over here. So, you know, you would have gotten the answer as incorrect and that would have been a little, uh, like, you know, error with the scoreboard thing and all. So, let's see how the scoreboards have settled up for now. So, we've got Shar at the number one position. Arush coming up second. Priyansh, Devit and then Ishan. Okay, let's move on to the next question then. Okay, try to answer this one really quick. This one is rather easy, so I'm expecting answers quite fast. I think the time was a little too long for all of you. Okay, absolutely correct. I don't think this question needs any sort of discussion. 8 plus 2, the sum of which is divided by 2, all of you have got the correct answer. So my thumbs up to all of you for this one. Double thumbs up, actually. Greatly, nicely done. Okay, so the scoreboard has a little bit of a change in terms of marks and marks only, but the positioning and everything looks exactly the same. Okay, moving further to the next question. Okay, everyone, let's see which one of you gets to the answer correctly and the quickest. Amanda has three packs of gum with 15 sticks in each, plus an additional nine pieces. Which expression could be used to show how she could share the gum among six people? Again, easy question. Okay, good. Only one of you got the incorrect answer. I'm sure that would be... Uh, I would really like to believe that that was a... Ma uh, like, you know, wrongly marked answer. But yes, all of you have got the correct answer nearly, which is option number B. So Amanda has three packs of gum with 15 sticks each. So one pack has got 15. So three packs would have three times 15 and an additional nine pieces. Okay, so that is what she have. Well, that is what she has. Now she needs to divide or share those pieces of gum among six people. So that entire thing is going to be divided by six. Now, the only difference between option A and option B is that we don't have a parenthesis here. Because of that, we would have to divide 9 by 6 first and then move on with the other options. So, that is why option A is incorrect and option B is the correct one. 
Great, nicely done. Having the same procedure of having a look at the scoreboard. Again, the points are moving up, but the list remains consistent. Let's have a look at the next question. Let's see how many of you are able to get to the correct answer with this one. Okay, so 30 seconds for this one. Okay, so eight of you have got the correct answer. Let's see how this was supposed to be done. Now, this one has got a very simple logic as to how we were supposed to attempt the question. Uh, we know that from this point till this point, there's one big parenthesis. So I'm just randomly assigning any number over here. Let me just put 20. Okay, I, uh, the answer is nowhere gonna be nearby 20 or look, you know, there's a, uh, I'm just putting a number that may, let us assume that the answer of this parenthesis is 20. So 20 divided by 2 gives us the answer as what? It gives us the answer as 10. Now we need half of the value. So we need the answer as half of 10, which is 5. Now that is only possible when we divide that by 4. So this one is out of question. This one is out of question. This one is out of question. And the answer is option number A. Easy peasy? Was the solution easy enough? Is there any one of you who actually solved all the four options? Is there anyone? I think there's going to be a little bit of hesitation regarding the thumbs up if anyone actually did it. So it's like, you know, even a meeky thumbs up is all right if you want to show that. Okay. Fine. With this, again, let's have a look at the scoreboard. Okay. So Ishan has brought a little change to the scoreboard by leveling up to fourth position. Okay. So let's move on to question number 14. Choose the correct option. Which option is not the correct interpretation of this numerical expression? Keep in mind, not the correct interpretation. So technically, there is three wrong answers and one correct answer if we go by the correct explanation. Quickly. Okay. So nine of you got it correct. And some of you not entirely correct. Let's have a look. So we've got the option which is not the correct interpretation. So the sum of 12 plus 80 multiplied by 4. Sum of 12 plus 80 does not quite go down well. So this is one of those rare answers where you get the correct answer in the option A itself. You don't have to, you know, reverse the process of going from D to A. So yes, the sum of 12 plus 80, this in itself is a uh, we can say it's a grammatical abomination over here. We have sum of 12 plus 80. Even if this was 12 and 80, it would still have been a logical statement. So not just mathematically, this is grammatically also incorrect. Okay, so that is why the answer is option number A. Is everyone clear with the explanation? Has everyone understood why the answer is option A? Okay, a quick thumbs up everyone, if you've understood. Great, wonderful. Okay, having a look at the scoreboard. Okay, so more or less, it kind of remains the same. We've got Shar, Arush, Priyansh, Ishan, and Divit. Moving on to question number 15. It is a multi-select question. Okay, so there's going to be more than one answers for this. Select all the answers which are correct. There could be just one answer or more than one answer. Okay, everyone is being really uh, thoughtful about this. Okay, so I've got maximum answers. For option number two, I have got some answers for option three, some answers for option A. But yes, all of you are correct. We've got option A, B, and D as the answers. 
तो सिक्सटी सेवन इज अ प्राइम नंबर नाइनटीन इज अ प्राइम नंबर फोर्टी वन इज अ प्राइम नंबर नाउ सिक्सटी फोर वॉज डेफिनेटली नॉट अ प्राइम नंबर बिकॉज इट्स एन इवन नंबर एंड द ओनली इवन प्राइम नंबर दैट वी हैव इज विच इज द ओनली इवन प्राइम नंबर दैट वी हैव आई वॉन्ट यू पीपल टू फिनिश माई सेंटेंस ओके मानित हैज आंसर्ड विथ इज फिंगर्स ओके खुशी और आंसर इज चेंजिंग एवरी टाइम ओके मुर्गेश इज करेक्ट आरुष इज करेक्ट Avni is still frowning. I don't know why Avni is always frowning. Avni is never smiling. Little bit of smile popping up from Avni. Okay, thank you. Okay, so yes, the answer is two. The only even prime number that we have is two. Thank you for answering it correct majorly. I have few answers in the chat as well. Okay, Khushi, my question was somewhat different. So thank you for making the effort for trying to make six and four with your fingers. That takes a lot of effort. Thank you for that. Okay, scoreboard tells us that Ishan is moving quite up. He was at the fifth position, leveled up to four, and now is at third. And Shar is very much, you know, maintaining his position. Okay, the next up, question number sixteen. Let's see how it comes up. You need to choose the correct option. Okay, let's see what the question is. How the options are given to us. Which of the following numbers are prime numbers? Check all that are true. Quickly, everyone. So we have got the answers with us. So now, which of the following numbers are prime numbers? A definitely could not have been the answer. C definitely could not have been the answer. Checking for eighty nine and one sixty three. Eighty nine usually all of us know that yes, it is a prime number because the prime numbers between one two hundred we frequently use them in our calculations. So eighty nine was definitely uh, you know the correct answer that most of you have got. Uh, yeah. Regarding the next one that we have got one sixty three. So one sixty three over here. Ah, uh, I'm sorry. Someone has written one sixty three is divisible by three. So Shang, that's not possible. One plus six is seven. Seven plus three is ten. So for the divisibility rule of three, what we have have is that the addition of all the numbers needs to be divisible by three. So one sixty three is not divisible by three. So Shang, I would suggest please check your answer one more time. Okay. So that is why one sixty three is yet again a prime number here. Having a look at the scoreboard. Divit and Priyansh have interchanged their positions, which brings us to the next question, which is question number seventeen. Okay, so let's see how many of you are able to get to the answer here. Quickly, ten more seconds. Okay, so some of you have answered option B. Let's see why. Okay, ninety-three. This is a little tricky one, but like I said, uh, I kind of answered this question in the previous question. Nine plus three gives us twelve. Twelve is divisible by three. So this number cannot be a prime number, even though it is odd. Thirty-six was definitely out of question. Thirty-one and seventy-nine, yes, they are prime numbers. Okay, having a quick look at the scoreboard. Okay, Priyansh is like, give me back my position. So again, Priyansh and Devith have a internal, you know, war going on. They are interchanging within themselves. Okay, so the rest of you, please buckle up. Let's have some new names on the scoreboard as well. Okay, question number eighteen. Everyone, try to find the answer for this.
Okay, so let's have a look. Okay, so the question said, what is the correct prime factorization of 36? So 36, we know that is 9 times 4. So whenever we have questions like these, just break it down to whatever comes to your mind the first. So my mind says 36 is 9 times 4. 9 is 3 times 3. 4 is 2 times 2. So we have 3 times 3 times 2 times 2, which is option number B. Now it said, what is the correct prime factorization? So some of you, if you would have selected option number C, that would have been because you only focused on the multiplication. That is 4 times 3 is 12, 12 times 3 is 36. But 4 is not a prime number. That is why we have the answer as option number B and not as any other options. Avni, like I explained, uh, the answer cannot be option C because 4 is not a prime number. This was again a trick option given to confuse you people. I hope you've understood the answer now, Avni. Uh, Arush, no worries, there could be technical glitches, but like I said, there are no, uh, like, you know, this is kind of supposed to be fun plus practice plus revision. If you're missing out on something because of technical difficulties, that's, that's all right. Okay, so we have Shar, Arush, Ishan, Priyansh and Devit again. So let's move on to the next question. Okay, so question number 19, let's see how many of you are able to get to the correct answer here. Correct prime factorization of the given number 56. Okay, wonderful. 12 answers, 12 of them correctly done. That is 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 7 is 56. Okay, nicely done. Some of you, I think, missed out on giving the answers. I think Arush kind of mentioned that he's having a little screen glitch problem. So that could be one of the reasons. Let's have a look. Shar first. Now I can see a new name over here, Fatsia, uh, with the fifth position, whereas Shar, Arush, Ishan, and Priyansh maintaining their respective positions. Okay. So, we've got question number 20. What is the correct prime factorization of 172? This is going to utilize a lot of amount of your time. Okay, majority of you have answered it correctly, which is a nice thing. Okay, so um, we have the number 172 with us. Now, okay, which one of you can tell me what is the divisibility rule of 4? What is the divisibility rule of 4? Without dividing, how can you identify whether a number is divisible by 4 or not? It is going to take a little bit of time for you to write down in the chat, but I'm giving you all two minutes. Try and tell me. Okay, Arush is correct. Anyone else who knows what is the divisibility rule of 4? Okay. Pranshul, I think you mean multiple, not factor. Right hand even number. Okay, Rudra, you are almost there with the answer. Okay, so uh, in the meantime, the rest of you, if you are kind of writing the answer, if the sum is divisible, no, Kushi, that's kind of not correct. So for four, what is the divisibility rule that we have is that the last two digits from the right side, when we look at the numbers, the last two digits, they should be divisible by four. So if we sometimes have, let's say, one, one, three, two, nine, eight, four, zero, if you want to find if this number is divisible by four, we just take the last two digits. 40 is 4 times 10. So the entire number is divisible by 4. Now if we focus on this particular question, this is definitely not the answer because that is not the prime factorization. Again, this is also not the answer. Now the battle is between option number 1 and option number 4. 
2 times 5. That means the number needs to be divisible by 5. What is the divisibility rule of 5, everyone? How do you identify whether a number is divisible by 5 or not? Okay. Aryan, slight correction. The last digit is not just 5. It could be 5 or 0. Both the cases are possible. Okay. So now, does 172 have a 0 or 5 at the last? No, right? So, this one is also again out of question. So, this question, you did not even have to actually prime factorize it. You could have just had a look at the options and figured out the answer. How many of you actually just had a look at the options and found the answer? Raise your hand. I'll raise my hand because that is how I worked it out. Okay. Pranshul, Hi-Fi, Kushi, Hi-Fi. Manit, Hi-Fi, Aryan, Hi-Fi. I'm sending Hi-Fi's to all of you. Avni is still frowning. Still can't see you smile. I have to remind Avni every single time after every question that Avni, you're supposed to be smiling. Did I put it up on the slide that Avni, you're supposed to frown and not smile? Was there an instruction like that? No, right? Even, I mean, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know if the name has been correctly put or not, but someone who's by the name of Murgish, even you're not smiling. The one in off-white pinkish top. You know, if you don't smile, it kind of makes me feel that, you know, you're not enjoying the session. This is actually like a very typical math, boring class. Let's not make it that way. If that was there, I would have put the name as boring math class. Please don't come. You don't want me putting the name like that, right? You see, Khushi, she's so much smiling. Okay. So, let's not take up any much of your time with uh, like you know seeing if anyone is smiling or not let's have a quick look at the scoreboard okay wonderful all five of you are maintaining your position this is like the most consistent scoreboard ever no worries about how india or australia or any of the people have been performing at the cricket matches or whatever or whatever sports that you people follow this is like the most consistent team that i have shar arush ishan priyansh and Divit and Fadzia, like, you know, coming up now and then. Okay. So, is everyone ready for the final question for today? Yes, no. I am not ready. I don't want to go to the next question. Till the time I don't get a thumbs up from everyone, I don't want to go to the next question. So many of you just want to get done with this class that you are actually, like, you know, giving me two thumbs up, everyone. Aryan, really bad. You really want this session to end up so quickly? You're giving me two thumbs ups for this? Okay. Okay, quickly. What is the correct prime factorization of 105? Quickly, put your thinking caps on. Okay, so that's not the best finale that I was expecting for. But yes, majority of you have got the correct answer. What is the correct prime factorization of 105? Okay, so we definitely know that the answer is going to contain 5. But this is not an even number. So this one is out of question. This one is out of question. This one is out of question. How many of you actually thought like that? 105 is not an even number. So 2 is not going to be a part of it. How many of you are genuinely saying yes that I have attempted in this way? And how many of you are trying to like, you know, sound cool by using that method? Okay, so I've got so many honest people. Okay, now Khushi also is frowning. Avni, your frown is very contagious. Even Khushi is not smiling now. Okay, great. So I'm happy that majority of you are getting the hang of it. You're trying to understand that, yes, this is how you're supposed to be attempting questions. This is how, you know, you can. Okay, so Divit actually did the equations. No worry, Divit. Any method is fine. Okay, Rudra, I'm waiting. What exactly are you asking me to wait for? I'm, I'm waiting for like 30 seconds. Okay, so uh, within all of these 21 questions, I had given you like, you know, pointers for some questions that, you know, this is how you're supposed to be attempting the questions. This is how you're supposed to be like, you know, uh, checking that how exactly some or the other question is supposed to be done. So, yes, this is uh, like, you know, 
what we had now let's have a overall look at the scoreboard so ishan coming up strong at third position number 2 we've got arush and number 1 we have got let's see shot okay and runners up are priyansh and fads okay so who exactly is shar like i'm i'm not able to understand with the names and all um okay aryan is shar aryan are you sure you're shar what made you put your name as shar like there's no connection between aryan and shar are you sure i'm kind of leaning towards sashank being shar at least the first letter is the same okay great so many many congratulations to all of you uh rudra i think uh, you are getting a little bit confused because um the fifth session is going to contain geometry the first, the curriculum is divided in such a way that day 1 is going to be the first topic day 2 will be the second topic day 3 will be the third topic so on and so forth is the procedure now clear to you first we have achieved it we have done it congratulations on successfully revising the domain of operations and algebraic thinking but which one of you can tell me what is going to be the next part mission that awaits us is we're going to have the next session on april 9 that is 2022 11 30 a.m to 12 45 uh this should be p.m so again yes uh the timings are going to be remaining the same this is according to the central time that is the cst the topic that we're going to be taking up next is the number and operations in base 10 okay so yes thank you for the wonderful class today thank you for your participation thank you for the lovely participation if i may add